the Lord is good all the time. My dear brothers and sisters, humility is a virtue. Humility is the foundation of all the success under the sun. Humility can be compared to a beautiful queen or princess. Humility is everything we need under the sun in order to reach the kingdom of God. The first reading of today from the book of Ecclesiasticus, this book consists in two parts. The first part is exhortation, and the last part is a proverb. This exhortation are divided into three because the writer of this book invites you and I to listen and to practice humility in three concrete ways. Now, the question will be, who is the humble person? The humble person is a man or a woman who perform is or our duties to the community with fidelity and consciousness, not the man or a woman who neglects his duties. A humble person is the person who is aware of his limitation, even when he set goals. He set those goals based on his or her capacities. The humble person is the person who does not use his social status to overlook others, to mistreat others, or to insult others. Therefore, St. Augustine would define humility as searching for the truth speaking the truth, living the truth, and accepting the truth. Now, let us go to the first one. The man or a woman who performs his or her duties with fidelity and consciousness who does not neglect his responsibilities. Most of us, if not all of us, we are in charge of our families, some in charge of parishes, others in charge of schools. How do we perform our duties? Do we perform our duties in order to transform the life of others? Or do we do it in order to enrich ourselves? Most of the time, we talk of our rights, my rights, my rights, my rights. We don't mention responsibilities. And because of that, some of us, we are so lazy at the extent that everything we blame others. Even when a child fails exams, the parent will say, it's the government. Is it true that a government official is the one who's writing that exam, or is the one who wrote that exam? Because we don't have to take responsibility, because we have the mind of our right, my right, we blame everything to others. At the end of the day, we neglect our responsibilities. Sometimes, when someone is drinking, is drunk, they say, no, it's the government. It's the government who's buying beer for you. Also, other time, we set goals. 
which we are not able to fulfill, which our capacity, our strength, our energy, our knowledge, our intelligence cannot accommodate, cannot comprehend. Imagine appointing someone, a CEO, who is senior six failure. Why? Because you set a goal without responsibility, without humility. What are your goals? Are you able to verify your goals? Imagine you are praying to God to give you a car when you don't have even a bicycle. That is lack of humility. Once you refuse to accept the truth, to speak the truth, to live the truth, then you are not humble. A humble man, a humble woman, is the person who dwell in the truth. Just like our savior, our teacher, the man we admire, the man we follow, he accepted to die on the cross. And after three days, God elevated him. He raised him from the dead. Once you accept the truth, God will bless you. God will help you. God will lead you. Sometimes, because of lack of humility, our social status is not there to help others. It's not there to transform the lives of the people. It's not there to build a common society where men and women are able to live together and enjoy life together. Some of us, we use our social status to enrich ourselves. And in most cases, when a poor man opens his mouth, we said, this man is he's making noise. Is he okay? Yeah. Is he mad? Why are you talking? Who, who gave you the permission to talk? When the rich man stands to talk, even for three hours, people will clap. Even when I speak nonsense, they will clap. Why? They don't clap because of what the man is doing. They clap because of his pockets. You're trying to observe when you have organized a social gathering, uh, the guests of honor, what time do they come? Three hours afterwards. The time is nine hours, the man will arrive 13 hours or one o'clock. Why? Because he's assured that whether you like it or not, you wait for him or you wait for her. So my dear brother and sister, this is the reason why the second part of the first reading of today is a proverb. What is a proverb? A proverb is a short, skillful statement which contain full of images to instruct, to educate the listeners. Today, in the first reading, there's a comparison of water and arm giving. Fire and sin. Why water? Why I'm giving? Water and I'm giving, they have the same effect. They try to control the force of evil. When you give each and every citizen what is due to that person, no one will strike. A friend of mine yesterday told me, you know, Father, you know, we got our, our salaries and in our, in our staff room, one got 5.8 million, that's after two months, and another one got 1.5 million. Imagine. 5.8 million, another one, 1.5 million. That is fire. Fire destroy. Fire changes everything into ashes. Sin separate us from our brothers and sisters, even from God.
This is the reason why the gospel of today, Jesus was a guest, was there sitting, watching them. Then he was telling his disciples, hey, Bananke, look at these people. They are just going for high seats. Why? Even the guest is a class of guests. They are driving is V8, Subaru, okay, uh, Alexis, okay, uh, Pajero, okay, Pajero Sports, they are entering. Then he observes two things. One, about the guest. Two, about the host. We have to understand that in a Jewish society of that time, people were sitting according to your social status. Montua Wansi, there. Eh? <laughs> Down there. Eh? Then uh, the rest, according to your social status, like in the army, okay? A general, a sergeant, a corporal down there. That's how they are sitting. But the people of today's gospel, they never followed the seating arrangement. People were jumping. Why? Because they wanted to show off. They wanted to use their power. They were power angry. They are arrogant. They are proud. Then Jesus told his disciples, look, when you behave like that, you know you are a couple. You are sitting on the chair of a general. Once the general enter in, you go back to your seats. <laughs> Better you sit on your seat. Maybe the hosts who appreciate you and call you up to the high table. My dear brothers and sisters, humility is a virtue. What matters is not what you think about yourself. It's not what you say about yourself. It's not your PhD, your master's, your doctorate, whatever. It's not that. Honor and respect, we don't give ourselves. People honor us. So what does it mean? Honor, humility, does not base on keeping quiet. Humility base on relationship with others. How do you relate with your brothers and sisters? How do you relate with your workmates? How do you relate with the choir members? How do you relate with the poor people? Because the more you humble yourself, the more people elevate you. No, there are people who are so, so proud of themselves, so proud of themselves. Even when they talk, they talk in a proud way. Even when they're introducing themselves, the introduction itself is a paragraph. <laughs> now, you, you see, uh, before I mentioned my name, you see, uh, when I was a kid, I went to Namiliango SS, then... Uh, <laughs> From there, from there, uh, I went to, to UK, and then after that, I did my, my master's in, in Amsterdam, then from there, I went to Russia, then after that, <laughs> hey, by the way, my name is Mr. Ben Chola. <laughs> All this thing is nothing. What matters is your relationship with others. You know, what makes me happy that despite everything, we all have one common denominator. The rich, the poor, the lame, the blind, our common denominator is death. That one, no compromise. 
Whether you are a priest, you are a bishop, you are a cardinal, you are all a provincial, death is their common denominator. So the more you humble yourself today, the more you reconcile with others, the more you relate in a humility way with others, God will bless you. The reason why Jesus in the last parts of the gospel, he talks of the lame, the poor, the crippled. Because he observed that the people who are entering in that house, they are all rich people. Why the poor? Why the lame? Why the crippled? Why the physically challenged? Why the blind? Because these people were considered in their society as guest people. They had no class, no voice. For you to invite a poor man, a woman to your wedding or birthday party, someone told me, Father, it's not birthday, it's birthday. So let me say it, birthday party. Huh? Huh? For you to invite a poor man or a poor woman to your occasion, to your celebration, you don't need only to have the economical generosity. You need to have the spiritual generosity and the social generosity. Because it's very easy to invite our friends. Father Anthony will say, to invite the big shots. So my dear friends, let us humble ourselves. Let us relate with the poor, the blind, the lame, the crippled. And when we do that, we will realize the beauty, the caring humility of God. Where do we see the caring humility of God? On the cross. He died on the cross for your sins, for my sins. So those of us who are blessed, those of us who have enough, you are blessed because God wants you to bless others. You are blessed because God wants you to transform the lives of the people. Last Sunday, I was telling those of 11 hours mass that I thank you, Father Sylvester, is the one who convinced me to, to come to Uganda seven years ago. So, Father, thank you very much. Okay. But I was in the provincial, and he came to Nairobi. I was a student there. He convinced me. I said, I'll be coming. Now, I thought, the, the, the reason why I came to Uganda is this. I came to Uganda in order to help people to realize the beauty of life, the beauty of being a Christian. And what is our focus? Because our destination is heaven. That's our destination. And I want the people of Umbuya Parish to go together with me, including Father Sylvester, all of us to heaven. <laughs> and because of that, because of that, my prayer each day, every day, morning, night, noon, I ask God, God, I want to be a gate man in heaven. <laughs> you know why I want to be a gate man in heaven? Because I want to see how many people from Buya who pass at that gate. <laughs> the Lord be with you.